night football lends itself, I think, to, to more speed, uh, probably because of the short quarters and the, uh, the conditions on the night. This is my first grand final, so uh, I'll uh, be learning a bit too, I suppose. Good evening and welcome to our midweek sports special bringing you the 1982 Escort Cup tonight it's grand final night and I'd like to welcome viewers throughout South Australia throughout our regional centres and uh, viewers through Melbourne and up there in Brisbane too. A pretty cold night here in Adelaide but uh, a good night for football as Port Adelaide take on Glenelg. Port had an easy win in their first match of the series against West Torrens winning 20 goals 15 to 6-11. That win put them through to the first semi-final against Norwood who had the advantage of playing on their home ground. However, the power and the skill of the Magpies paid off in the third and fourth quarters, and they went on to win 12-3 to Norwood's 9-10. Glenelg also had an easy first match, beating North Adelaide 22-15 to 12-11. Their semi-final match was against South Adelaide, previous Escort Cup winners and a side unbeaten in night games for several years. The Tigers made a great start, and by the end of the first quarter were five goals to one up. Superior play throughout the game kept them on top, eventually winning 11-9 to 8-10. Both teams obviously very keen to carry on their good form uh, under lights and a replay of the 1981 SANFL Grand Final. Of course, Port Adelaide won that quite comfortably, so Glenelg are really out to prove something tonight. Can they do it? A short time ago, down in the Port Adelaide rooms, Brenton Miles was talking to uh, Port Captain Brian Cunningham about Port's great tradition to come up in the tough ones. We haven't played well the last couple of weeks, although you can't underestimate our opposition because I think Woodville last Saturday put in one of their best performances. But, um, yeah, we're looking for a win tonight. Uh, we've got down the rooms fairly early and, and it's fairly urgent here at the moment. Yeah, let's comment about that because the feeling in the rooms, uh, there's a real sense of urgency about it and you're obviously taking this very seriously. Oh, there's no doubt about that. Any game, uh, the players, of course, with their personal pride, look at their performances, but uh, there's a big stake of money on the end of it. The club's looking at that and uh, a lot of prestige and it's been a good competition and we're very pleased that we're in it tonight. Well, we wish you well with the final of the Escort Cup. Thanks, Brent. Good luck, Brian. And looking at that uh, Port Adelaide side, three changes, and it's a pretty strong combination too. Anthony Williams onto a half forward flank. We have uh, Dwayne Russell onto the uh, interchange bench, uh, strong lad this one, and Craig Ebert, uh, who's uh, in a back pocket. Fairly strong lineup out of the side, Leslie Kale and Paul Plesha. Well, Glenelg certainly have something to prove. Uh, they've been criticised of, of late for not being able to come up when it really matters in the finals. They didn't do it in 1981. How about the Escort Cup uh, final tonight? Short time ago, Brenton Miles down in the uh, rooms for with the Tigers captain, Paul Weston. As you know, we've got a very hard month coming up and, of course, being such a big game tonight, being the night grand final, it gives us a chance to prepare once again for our assault on the finals. We read that uh, your coach has employed some rather special tactics or certainly different tactics in your lead-up to tonight's game. Uh, yes, we had a, a, a very good exercise on Monday night. Uh, we are, I think, missing a couple of players because of flu, uh, but still, we'll, we'll certainly be out there and, and give our best effort. Uh, we've got a couple of positional changes, so it'll be interesting to see how they work. We wish you well, Paul, in the final of the Escort Cup. Thanks Good very luck. much, Brent. And there is the Glenelg lineup. A pretty strong combination it is too. Uh, Stephen Kernahan lining up in a forward pocket. No doubt he'll spend some time on the ball, but always very dangerous around the goal area. Carey, Weston, and McGuinness a very strong ruck lineup, and uh, Glenelg looking a pretty powerful combination. Brenton Miles with me now. Uh, both sides have been hit fairly seriously with injuries. Yes, they have, uh, Graham, but. Uh, the reason why Port Adelaide and Glenelg are two of the top sides in our competition is they have this uh, great depth of reserves. And I think the sides selected tonight mirror that. Uh, they've both come up with two, uh, with two very good teams and we can still expect a very high standard of football from the players selected tonight. You were down in the rooms a short time ago. How is the feeling? The feeling is uh, expectedly a grand final atmosphere. I think that's the only way you could describe it and uh, obviously so. 
There's something very special about grand finals. The players, when you walk in there, are quite subdued outwardly, but uh, inwardly, of course, the adrenaline is pumping. They realise that uh, there's only one result that, uh, that the coach, the players, the supporters of their teams want in a grand final, and that is obviously to win. Uh, we've found in these night uh, matches that uh, whoever gets the jump in the first quarter is just as likely to go on to win. Well, it's, it's been the pattern. You're, you're right. The, uh, the sides that have performed well in the first quarter have got a four to five goal break. Um, have seemed to have won the games, and it happened to Glenelg, it happened to Port Adelaide in uh, previous Escort Cup games. So I think it's a point that both uh, coaches would have made tonight, that uh, the first quarter performance may have a very telling bearing on the end result. Thanks, Brenton. Well, both sides now on the ground. Uh, all is in readiness. We'll take a break. We'll be back with commentators Ian Aitken and Dennis Airy for the first quarter of the 1982 Escort Cup Grand Final. Dennis, there's no doubt about it, a grand final is a grand final. Doesn't matter what time of the season it is, and the atmosphere here this evening is electrifying. Yep, true. Uh, when you have a look at the two uh, the two teams that are playing, Port Adelaide and Glenelg, lately have been traditional rivals in a big game like this. Yes, there's no doubt about it, and uh, I know you're an old Port Adelaide supporter and player, uh, Dennis, but how do you really see the outcome of this? Well, uh, I wouldn't like to guess. Port Adelaide's form's been down in the last couple of uh, weeks and Glenelg's form has been fluctuating. So two sides, when you put them together like that and uh, the form is down, it's just about an equal match, isn't it? Yes, it certainly is. And, of course, the uh, the weather here tonight, there's a, there's a fairly strong breeze blowing from the right-hand side of your screen. So uh, that'll favour immediately the end that Glenelg is going to and uh, historically sides that get away to a very quick start generally win. So the opening bounce of the grand final of the Escort Cup. Johnson and Carey, two giants of South Australian football, the ball inside the square, and umpire Rick Kinnear, together with Des Foster, are in charge. Rick Kinnear, the bouncer of that ball, it's his first grand final. Big Carey up. Paul Belton, the first clear kick towards half forward. Big battle, James. Melbourne viewers know him comes from South Melbourne and has arrived halfway through this season to play for the Magpies, his old club. So the bounce on the half-forward line is on the Magpies. Nine, Anthony Williams, a well-known South Australian name from Mark, Stephen and Foster. Russell Johnston, about to kick. Long to the goal square, looking for Evans. Won't make that. Carey, Coleman and McFarlane go wide, but umpire Rick Kinnear's picked a free from there. And he's going the way of Keith Coleman. Coleman considered uh, playing on, but the umpire's indicated that he's got to kick over the mark. And, of course, the uh, Russell Johnson, a former Victorian, has played tremendous football in these night games. There's an excellent kick from Coleman. That's an indication of how strong the breeze is. He's banged it right into the middle. Paul Belt, the state player for uh, South Australia, couldn't gain possession, but he goes back in. The ball is on the ground, and the umpire will bounce again. Great rivalry between these two sides. Port Adelaide, probably one of the proudest uh, clubs in Australia. The tap goes in the way of uh, Glenelg, and it's Corns booting it down towards a half-forward flank, and a long lead out, and it's taken very nicely by Johnny Painter. The most exciting footballer. A natural left footer, but can kick right if necessary. There's the kick in towards the square, and it's going to go awfully close. Danny Hughes, state full back, rushes it towards the line and takes it through for one behind. Rush score, first one comes up off the, uh, the scoreboard to Glenelg and they lead by one straight behind. Two surprises, Craig Ebert in the back pocket, he's the brother to Russell Ebert, the younger one, and a player well within his own right, and here's Robertson, half-back flank for the Magpies. Long kick, holds in the breeze, drops like a rock, centre wing, Russell Ebert, Puppets, Corns beats him well, and we see the ball over the line. Centre wing, the breeze, on your screen, travelling right to left. Johnson and Carey, big men of uh, football as Huppets, goes towards half forward and beautifully 
the left foot short towards the half forward line. Sewer takes the front, takes possession, gets it over to young Kernahan, a brilliant young player, down towards Seabome and Hole. Taking it away, well done. That's Ebert. Gets the long hand pass. Johnson back to Huppets. And the Port Adelaide defence, probably the strongest in South Australia, go wide. Looking for Craig Badby, a state wingman. He'll be pitted against David Marshall, a talented player, and we'll see a throw in. 16, Bell. 20, Holst, returning from injury, playing at centre against Russell Ebert. That's a big contract. And Paul Weston. With a right foot, around the corner it goes. Lunas the spoil, taps it forward, makes a good 10 or 15 metres. Painter comes back to Kernahan, tucked away into the pocket, slaps the ball across the face of goals, directly across over the line, and we'll see a throw in. Yes, and Glenelg look very slick the way they're moving the ball around very quickly. They look sharp, they look tidy, and very neat in the way that they're going about things. Left full forward pocket. Linnell going to left-hand side of your screen. Knocked down by Johnson. Painter back there trying to gain possession. Johnson in there, burrowing away, and will get the free kick. Big fella's been in absolutely scintillating form in 1982 and uh, has played with great distinction in the Escort Cup. Outer side. Holst was over there, but it's taken away for Port Adelaide by Craig Bradley, number 21. Tony Giles, a man of the match uh, winner. Gets put under plenty of pressure, but goes back for possession. Loses it, but keeps his body over. Well played. Out it goes. Bradley couldn't get to it. On the ground, Carey is in there. The free kick, and it goes to number 27, which is Alan Gill. 15-metre penalty. Gill's kick, a good one into the breeze. Goes towards centre-half forward. In the danger area as far as, far as Glenelg are concerned. But it's the Evergreen Corns kicking for safety. Holst over there. Couldn't gain possession of the ball. Number 30 is Peter Maynard for uh, the Tigers. Holst there. Wasn't retarded, so the umpire calls play on. Kinnear gains possession of it. Kinnear puts it up towards the square. Coolman up. Couldn't gain possession either. It's on the ground. Anthony Williams, number nine. Looking for the safety of the line. Couldn't get it. And Holst has certainly found it on this occasion with a fist towards the line. Out of play. In the past, Glenelg have uh, not been able to pull the big ones out of the fire. So the rumour around Adelaide at the moment is, can Glenelg win the grand finals? Port Adelaide, a known tradition of doing so. so coach John Halbert has that task ahead of him. As Kinnear goes to the square, big group. Williams there. Frost carting the ball away quickly as McGuinness, scintillating Rover, in top form at the moment, gets the long ball, handball over to Barrett, who will go into the inside the square, the flick on, Robertson at the back, got a chance, zip zap to her, Giles, in trouble, ball still inside the square, a lot of hard work going on, and a player grab ball not in possession. Take the ball inside the square. Left footer, long, to full forward. Seabohm there, Johnson supporting beautifully and tapping it away as Hughes into the back pocket. He even goes to ground and is pushed in the back, freed by umpire Des Foster. As young Craig would have only played four or five league games, improving all the time. Over the top of Kernahan, taken up quickly by Carey, forward at Seabohm, down by Hughes, cut out by Ebert, who's got plenty of time, looks long, goes to Huppets. The Magpies out of trouble, short, Bradley, one hand, Marshall for the crumbs. Tap forward, clever football, picked up beautifully by Johnny Painter in trouble, smothered beautifully. And again, Hughes, strong from fullback, the left footer straight to Ebert, good mark. Ebert, quick as a flash, got it over, the umpire's called play on, and so he should as Danny Hughes boots it down centre wing. The attempted mark taken there by James, and has been awarded the free kick anyway. Max James. Decides to play on, does it well. He should thump this right towards the square. Evans, Coolman playing in front. Well played, Keith Coolman. Coolman, of course, started his football at West Adelaide, now playing for Glenelg, represented the state, and a very solid erstwhile fullback. Half back flank, Carey couldn't take the mark. The ball a little bit slippery at the moment. A bit like a butcher's apron. Centre wing. Free kick, Paul Belt. 
possibly having his best season in uh, South Australia. The kick is not a good one. It falls on wanting hands. Peter Kerry. David Holst underneath it. Couldn't take the mark. Russell Johnson there. Fists it forward. This is a good tackle. Taken by Holst. Holst towards half forward. McGinnis in front. And... Uh, Big Greg Phillips. Very happy to thump that ball to the boundary line and out of play. Out of sight of the oval. Good crowd in attendance for the Escort Grand Final. Western over the top. Johnny Painter was the player that put it forward. Hughes, state fullback for South Australia. Carey showing a dominating uh, part in this game early on. Ebert, four times McGarry medalist, slipped it across and did it very well. Bradley, forwards. The two 12s on this occasion, it's Corns. Corns across, finds his teammate, taken by Peter Maynard. He's not wearing number 30 Guernsey tonight. Kernahan down there, couldn't take it. Weston is there for Glenelg, he's got it. Quick as a flash, gets it over to a teammate. Back it goes to Weston. Weston looking for Painter. Painter has it, swings onto that natural left foot of his. Boots it over towards Kernahan. Kernahan in the front, beautiful spoil by Hughes. And for the time being, Port Adelaide are out of trouble. Across their half-back line, Belt ducks the head, gets it almost pulled off. Play on his call, good call. Picked up quickly by Chris McDermott, goes wide, and again even. Well supported by Eckerman. The hand pass goes astray, it's loose to McGuinness. Now the, the Tigers have got possession towards Weston and Hughes. Weston tries to steal, he's grabbed by the leg, and uh, the captain for the Tiger side will take his kick. The wide pole is the point post. So there's an idea of the angle that he's got a kick from. Lux of fortune. Paul Weston appeared as though he was going to charge straight off and try and improve the angle, but he was tripped, according to umpire Foster. Let's have a look at this check side. That's how he holds that ball, really angles the ball across the boot as he follows through. Through for the one point. So the point's one point apiece. That's two to the bays, I beg your pardon. Magpie's yet to score. In the first term of the grand final... Port Adelaide versus Glenelg. Ten minutes have gone, and Danny Hughes to kick in. Nice kick. His target, Johnston. Robertson the Crumbs. Plenty of time from the halfback flank. Looks wide, Anthony Williams. And Johnny Snout McFarlane. Close to the line, carries it. Quite content to go over the top, and we'll see a throw in. Eleven minutes into the first quarter of the Escort Cup Grand Final. Port Adelaide in black and white. And Glenelg in black and gold. Kick clear. This one's gone and it'll go to Ivan Eckerman. Eckerman number four for Port Adelaide. Current uh, state back pocket player. Towards centre half forward. And there's a good mark taken by Graham Corns. Beautiful well leaper. Corns. Possibly in the twilight of his career, but still playing like a youngster. McGuinness there. Eckerman again, number four on the bottom of the pack. He's tackled high by Kernahan and Ivan Eckerman playing in the front position. Gains the rewards. Decides to play on and drop the ball. So the kick will be taken by number 57 for Glenelg, who is Ian Hyde. Center full forward, and there's a good mark taken for Glenelg. Down in the forward position, and it's taken by Kernahan. Number 31 was uh, Johnny Seabom, but it was uh, Kernahan it was that took the mark. Two behind so far as all Glenelg has scored, and it's 11 minutes in, so they haven't been off to a very snappy start. The kick from Kernahan from our angle has gone far to the right-hand side. The umpire has indicated that, so that's the third behind. And really, uh, Dennis, when you think about it, you've normally got to kick uh, two or three goals by this time in the first quarter if you're going to win in night football. Bad football, Ian, isn't it? If you can't kick straight, you don't have goals, you don't win. So we'll be beginning to shape up. Uh, Coach Halbert's got uh, Holst on Ebert. That was a good move in the grand final. Cut Ebert out of the game. But the dominating man you look for is Greg Phillips at halfback. Here's Holst, the player I was talking about a moment ago. He'll be aiming towards West. And over the top comes Greg Phillips, the second-name player, Silk. 
gets the ball quickly over to McGuinness. He goes into the forward pocket. Hughes over the top, the flyer is uh, Johnny Seabone. He can't control it, and yet another point goes on the board. So that's four on the board to the Tigers. The Magpies yet to score. It's a known fact that if you don't score early in the night games, you don't win. The drop punt. Just shoving going on there. Underneath that heap, Craig Bradley gets it over to Giles. Port Adelaide side has almost the total state defence. Um, in its six positions as Hoffner goes wide, puts the ball into Kinnear, the left footer towards the half forward line, Coleman, James down, opposition 12 takes it in corns towards half forward, big carry, over the top, try to get it to Sewer, can't do so, Bradley in trouble, good tackle by Kernahan, the quick and the tall, the tall wins that one, this youngster Began his league footy career last season. Played brilliant football in his second season. Johnny Seabone, taken on by Hughes, taken out of the game to Robertson. The back pocket. Flick defensively towards the line, over the side, throw in. Yes, percentage football played on that occasion by Robertson. He, uh, he had two selections. He either had to go across the face of goals and there was no one to support him or rush it out of play and he took the latter. High. Bradley rips in there to gain possession of the ball, and in actual fact, it's number 19, which is Ray Huppets. Huppets' kick is clear. Port Adelaide working it away. Robertson can kick left or right. On this occasion, it's a left foot. Over there is Graham Corns, and Corns playing solid football at the moment. Corns and James, two very experienced players. Corns, most of the football being played on the outer side of the oval at the moment as it goes towards centre half forward. Melton over there, Huppets is there for Port Adelaide. The long hand pass is clear and it's Bradley now moving the ball very methodically in towards the left half forward flank. Knocked down, Kinnear is across, kick clear. Belton back there, Carey up and the big fella takes the mark. Quick as a flash, over to Corns. Forward it goes to McGuinness. McGuinness running in. A long kick in towards the square. Hughes is back there for Boyle. Oh, good mark, or an attempted mark. The umpire said it's not paid. It should be in a shot for goal. There is a shot for goal, but I think you'll find it's the fifth behind for the Tigers. But as yet, Port Adelaide have not been able to score. Yes, Mike Lannis, the player that uh, kicked around the corner, put it across the face of goals. So now Danny Hughes, he'll go short. Did it well, Ebert. Craig Ebert, only a youngster, with a drop punt. Looks good, wide, centre wing. James, Corns, the discipline spoil. Tap forward again by McDermott. Wide this time, Lannis again, puts the long ball towards full forward. Weston slips at the uh, worst possible time, but it's made the goal before the defence can get to it. So there's 1-5, Port Adelaide yet to score. That was good football on the part of Lannis. So here you see him in the replay. He's got possession and he decided that the best way to get the goal was to kick it right up as far and as long as he could. And there was a little bit of a mix up in the square and uh, the ball has gone through. Robertson, of course, number 24 for Port Adelaide, couldn't uh, impede the progress and it's through. 1-5. Port Adelaide yet to score. Robertson and Carey go down in a heap together. Huppets. Good interception by Hoffner. Very speedy footballer is uh, Hoffner. He served a match uh, of suspension. Oh, there's a good mark taken at centre full forward. And it's been uh, at centre half forward. It's been taken by number 30, who is Big Ben Harris. Harris boots the ball right up towards the square. It's a big booming kick, but behind. No one can take it. Here's a chance for Belton. Belton has a shot at the goals. Can't get to it. Bradley over there in the right full forward pocket. Plenty of pressure put on him by number 16 for Glenelg, which is David Marshall. And the ball is out of play in the left full forward pocket. Carey. Oh, good body work, Peter Carey. Kicks it out towards the right half back flank. Holster's over there. So is Ebert. Ebert keeps it in play with good football. Bradley towards centre half forward. Oh, superb mark! Superb mark taken by Ben Harris. Big tall youngster is Harris. The distance shouldn't be beyond him. The accuracy is nothing wrong there either. And Harris is banged through Port's first goal. They trail by five behinds at the moment. Linnell, one goal, five. Ben Harris, Ebert it was, that uh, got it across. 
very quickly the ball was kicked over towards the centre half forward position and look at that mark taken by Ben Harris it's a beauty controlled it all the way down just when he looked like losing control he held it good football Johnson Carey down to Huffett's the hurry kick towards half forward Anthony Williams pitted against McFarlane a veteran of over 200 games for the Tigers taken away by Ebert though pressured still by McFarlane taken up by state wingman Bradley goes short bullet type left footer down towards Belton he's taken out of the game push says umpire Kinnear and the state centre player will take his kick from the forward pocket the bearded belt drop punt that falls short again picked up by Evans the kick goes straight up and straight down then let, let's have them look at them gather all picked up brilliant a chance that goes begging corn smothers over the ball and goes defensively to the line is good defensive football had a pack of magpies around him that's the best way to go yes, for one point a pack of uh, magpie supporters too Dennis as they uh, air their displeasure by booing but it was the only common sense football as Kuhlman yet again brings it in Kerry takes yet a, another excellent mark as he kicks down towards the left half forward flank and there's a good mark taken in defense a solid mark taken by Craig Ebert number 32 looking for Max James who's got his eye on the ball but he couldn't take the mark 57 is Ian Hyde tapped forward by Weston the opportunity for Kerry Eckerman went without possession of the ball Johnson's got it on to James James has got Huppets unmarked down ground he's got possession of the ball over it goes to Ben Harris the big fella and a beautiful smother by McFarlane oh what a superb smother out of play Johnny McFarlane a veteran one of the lightest built players in the game and what an excellent smut, and that was great courage. Corns is over there. Painter, quick as a flash. Frost, out of play. 1-5, one, 1-1. One, one. Glenelg leading. And seeing as Glenelg have got the use of the breeze, they really haven't taken full advantage of it, but we'll have to wait to see what the second quarter brings. But at the moment, Port Adelaide would be favourites as Hoffner kicks the ball back into play. Ben Harris's area. Kerry couldn't take it. Corns number 12 has got it. Looked for the hand pass, decided against it. Looked down ground for Tony McGuinness. Good shepherding there by uh, Sua. McGuinness couldn't capitalise on it. And the ball is on the ground and umpire Kinnear will bounce. Could get that one then from uh, Giles. Three Tigers around him. Could do very little. Here's the bounce. And tidy football. Bit of pressure now. James got away the hurried left foot is accurate finds an unattended Belton he goes long inside the square Evans versus Coleman and Coleman again concedes the point by slamming it over the line a bit of disciplined defense so another point to the Magpies 1-2 Glenelg 1-5 and here's one of the longest kickers of a football in South Australia screw punt inside the square over the top Johnson down to Corns playing well at half back goes with the short left footer it's accurate and finds Sir Tony McGuinness at centre wing, left footer again. He's looking for Kernahan in front. Phillips, there's the siren to end the first term of the grand final. Glenelg lead 1 5, Port Adelaide 1 2. Neither side able to uh, make a break in the first quarter, so it augurs well for a very tight uh, grand final. Three points the difference after the first quarter of the 1982 Escort Cup grand final. We'll be back with uh, Brenton Miles' analysis of the first quarter after this break.
a very high standard of football produced by both sides in that first quarter. It was interesting from the point of view that the first half I thought belonged to Glenelg. It started with the superb form of Peter Carey and Ruck. He gave opportunities to plenty of teammates all around the ground. It was really Glenelg that uh, performed very well in the first 10 to 12 minutes of that quarter. He had uh, great support from Graham Corns in great form also at centre half back, driving his uh, side into attack from that across that centre half back position. They were only able to score five points, however, before the, uh, they registered their first goal, about halfway through the first quarter. And then it was Port Adelaide uh, who came back, primarily through the uh, influence of Harris at centre-half forward. Well held by Corns until then. He took two uh, very telling marks across centre-half forward. It resulted in their, uh, in their first goal, and so at the end of this first quarter, they're only three points behind the nil. We predicted that uh, one of the two sides, and uh, who can guess which one, might have uh, taken a three or four goal lead in that first quarter and so made it very hard for their opponents to get up and win this game. But it's a very even contest. It's uh, a contest full of aggression, plenty of skill, some very, very slick handball by the Glenelg side, and we wait with great an anticipation for the uh, remaining three quarters. One two Port Adelaide, one five Glenelg, so that's three points in front of the 1981 runner-up. McGuinness. Centre half forward is the ball and it's fisted forward. Centre wing, Giles comes down to uh, contest. Bradley was over there, Marshall number. With plenty of time, David Granger. Has a few words to say to the umpire. That's unusual for David. As Frost thumps it forward, looking for Sewer. Sewer couldn't quite get to the ball. Giles is on his hammer and tack. That's clever football by Sewer. But Giles keeps the pressure on equally as uh, creditable. It's Western forward. McGuinness, number eight for the Tigers. Robertson. And it's Huppets. Belton, who considered giving football away uh, in 1981. But uh, fortunately, he didn't because he's made the state side in 1982. David Johnson crashing his way through. Tony Giles, number 23 for Port Adelaide. Plenty of pressure. Ball on the ground. McFarlane, number three. Craig Bradley, number 21 for Port Adelaide. Forward it goes. The awkward bounce for Granger. Whoops. David Granger just caught one. And at left half forward flank. Two minutes into the second quarter of the Escort Cup Grand Final, Port Adelaide going to the left-hand side of your screen and Glenelg going to the right-hand side. Granger versus Carey. It comes wide. Frost has got the chance. After him, Williams. Frost forced to kick with the right foot. Taken down by uh, Holst is even. And the free given to the centre player for the Magpies. From centre wing. He'll look long, straight towards the half-forward position. Underneath that to fall of the ball is Weston. He'll play on quickly. No pressure applied, goes wide. Sewer, the bolter, tries to take the ball on. Gets rid of Giles, does that effectively. He's run too far, says umpire Des Foster. And so Giles, that sigh of relief, got past him. Had an open paddock to run into. But now forced to give the ball away. Now the hard work starts. The first quarter nerves. Now settling down to the hard, determined football of a grand final. Williams, Mark Pay, our forward flanker for the Magpies tonight, together with David Granger. It's been a problem line for coach John Cale right through the day series. Can he get a winning combination there? Evans, Coleman. Coleman's normally had the, the measure of uh, Evans in the day games. The ball is hustled over the line. And the Magpies, one point, one three. Trail Glenelg, one five. A difference of two points. Yes, and there's plenty of uh, pressure in that defensive line on both parts. So this is the third occasion that Port Adelaide have had uh, a behind rush through. And Glenelg have picked up two. Johnson couldn't get it. Here's a chance now for Port Adelaide's number 27, Alan Gill. The kick is right up. It's long enough. It's straight enough. And there's no problems whatsoever. He's banged it straight through for Port Second. It was inevitable. Two goals, three, Port Adelaide. Glenelg, one goal, five. Well, 
every opportunity taken by Alan Gill, ex-skipper of the reserves for the Magpies. The left foot, not his natural foot, good distance from there, had the accuracy and really kicked uh, a superb goal. 2-3 to Port Adelaide, 1-5 to the Tigers. And a good goal to the Magpies early in the second term. Straight off the deck, straight to the chest of Greg Phillips at halfback. Unquestionably the best centre half back in South Australia will take it further than that as well. With the big kick go down and a great mark taken by David Marshall. Remember a few of those marks he's taken in the night series. A superb jumper. Good attempt by uh, young Kernahan and the mark is paid. Strong opposition from Phillips. Only a youngster, second season of football. Hughes at the back. A hurried hand pass out. Pressure beginning to build, does so. Now a big scramble of players, untidy football, hard stuff. That set a half forward for the Tigers, and we'll see a bounce. By Rick Kinnear. Kernahan. Johnston. Ball inside that pack again. Comes out clear. Quick kick by Eckerman goes wide. Peter Hoffner has to do the chasing. After him, Hine. The hand pass is loose to McGuinness. Close against the line, puts it long, a chance for Seabone versus at the back. Comes Johnston, he's attacked quickly. Is there a point to be conceded? The player slammed into the point post and we'll see another bounce. Yes, right in the behind the post. 2-3 Port Adelaide, 1-5 Glenelg, six minutes into the second quarter of the grand final. Kernahan could palm down to Lannis. Over it goes to McGuinness. These two youngsters, good footballers. And Glenelg have uh, got plenty of talent for years to come. But at the moment, it's Port Adelaide who have a slender lead. Beautiful snell, beautiful attempt to kick for goal by number 57, Ian Hine, but it goes out of play on the full. Hughes, out towards the half-back flank. Johnson, number 25. Carey's there as well. McFarlane, well, he's been as quick as a flash to James. James down ground. Corns couldn't take the mark. The attempt there by Stephen Barrett. Umpire Foster. Most experienced umpire in South Australia has picked out a free kick. The Tigers carry over the top. Didn't hold it long enough. Eben, number seven. Towards the boundary line. And in actual fact, it is out of play. So 15 it. plays 11. Port on top. At centre wing then, Johnson versus Carey at the back western. Puts it down, Johnny Painter goes with the right foot down towards the half forward line. Taken beautifully by Ebert, had a good first term from that back pocket. Everything he's done has been positive. Paul Weston, sure user of the ball. Beautiful pair of hands, goes long and low. Kernahan, Johnson, tap forward by Giles, picked up by Belton, the left footer, Bradley. Hand pass is good, Granger, one step and blasts. Keith Coleman lumbers after the ball. It will tumble over the line in front of him for a throw in. End to end. Almost a game of the defences at the moment. Strong defences by both sides, not allowing any forwards, to any free space at all. Young Ben Harris, his first season, number 30, centre screen. Came from amateur league to join the league ranks at Port Adelaide. Over the top goes Granger. Couldn't control it. In there is Corns, taken over to McFarlane. And the Bays have got a chance to, to clear with a drop punt. Kernahan, Johnson. Johnson almost the second grab. From half back, Greg Phillips has come. Grab wall, not in possession. Almost on the half forward flank for the Magpies. The long kick, screw punt into the forward pocket. Evans, front spot, good grab. And the top goal kicker for South Australian League football has got the mark in the pocket. This man leads by streets in the uh, Saturday day competition. Beautiful pair of hands. Front spot for the first time in the night and a good grab. A cute angle. The drop punt. Makes an absolute liar of a commentator. Slams the ball straight out of bounds on the other side of the goals. Both sides having great difficulty in kicking goals at the moment with Port Adelaide having kicked the most. They've kicked two and three behinds, two, three to one, five. Of course, the winner of this encounter tonight wins $20,000.
The big mark taken by David Granger. The most interesting and most exciting footballer in South Australia. On many occasions, he's brought the displeasure of opposing the supporters, and that's a beautiful kick by Granger. Evans takes the mark, but I don't think it'll be allowed because it's through for one behind. A good, strong, long kick by David Granger. Well, let's see how Keith Corman goes. I made the statement of the first term. He's the longest kicking uh, footballer in South Australia. That one's into the breeze. Goes wide to the half-back line. Taken out by James. The player grab while not in possession. And it's going to be David Granger again. You either love him or you hate him. Plenty of vigour. Very colourful uh, figure is Granger. Again, the long screw punt. Travels a good 60 metres. Front spot, Anthony Williams charges the ball towards half forward. Carey overruns it. Johnson, pushed forward by Weston. Good football with a left foot. Giles, corner of the square. An unusual mistake with the hands allows Sewer in. Close to the corner is uh, Kernahan. And again, a bit of ping pong. It goes wide. Battle of the wingman. Hoffner, James. And the player underneath that lot will be Hine. And young Ian Hine. He's going to learn about uh, grand finals very, very quickly. Very inexperienced wingman. He goes down towards full forward. Seabone gets him. He's a opposition out of the way. In there is Greg Phillips. Taps it forward to his back pocket, Eckerman. Towards centre wing. The odds, two to one. Over the top, Hoffner. Wide to Holst. After him, Ebert. The hand pass, good. The hand pass, though, is loose again, though. Into the forward pocket. Trouble. All two Bay players into one another. The hurry kick forward. Seabone, but uh, coming back quickly is Johnson. The hand pass is loose to Hughes. Picked up well by Robertson. And the left footer, all fine. Zip tap sewer. Unattended on the half forward line. Drop punch short. Cut out by Huppets. Huppets it is on the half back flank. Made plenty of football. Down to Granger. Granger couldn't take it. Quick as a flash, Marshall it was, it got it to Sewer. Frost, Frost has to get past, it does it well. Robertson, tackled, Phillips is there. Phillips gets the hurried kick. Searching for a Johnson, but out of play. Left half back flat. So neither side at the moment can uh, gain an ascendancy. There would be 10 minutes to go as Sewer is coming off the ground and warming up for Glenelg as uh, Granger gets the kick in. Simmons it was, it came on the ground for Glenelg. The ball is on the ground and umpire Foster is very quick to have a look. So the bounce at centre wing. Carey. Looking to be coming against him is young Ben Harris. Good body work, straight down the throat of Granger. He gets rid of it quickly. Down towards Belton Country, almost the good mark taken. In strongly. Maynard. Over the top, Corns. In hard carry. Well tackled by Williams. Takes the ball forward into the uh, half forward line. Belton. Still working hard, Hofner. Ebert. McFarlane. Robertson. Tagged, but gets the left footer. It's a bad bounce all over the place for Frost. In goes Carey. After that is Huppets. The ball hustled over the line. 19 is Huppets. 21 is Bradley. And we'll see a throw in. 16 versus 11. Carey in the front position. Gets a beautiful palm down to Painter. Painter down towards the half forward flank. Giles has a look at the ball, and Kernahan has a better look at it and gets a strong grip. Kernahan towards centre half forward. Lunnis, number 24, was a kicking in danger. Who cares? Hughes, you care if you cop one in the cruet. That's taken away there by Giles. Giles towards centre half forward. Two Glenelg players down there. Craig Bradley tackled by Kerry, and the ball will be free kicked to uh, Corns. Top tackle, Graham Corns. Had no uh, chance of getting rid of the ball. The hand pass over to McFarlane. Into the open space. Why? Greg Phillips with a one-hander, a spectacular one-hander. Good balance, good skill. Usually a long kicker of the ball. That's a beautiful screw punt. Back towards half forward. Granger up and down before the ball got there. Marshall the crumbs and the left footer into the open space. Over the line. 
and we'll see a throw in. So still five points the difference, 15 minutes into the second term of the grand final at Norwood. Kernahan, down wide to McGuinness, he's clear, the left footer towards half forward, making front spot, just arrived is Peter Simmons, in trouble, Danny Hughes is there, shoved in the back, and gets the free. Hughes it will be, that'll take the kick. Big fella, well and truly over six foot, about six foot three, 14 stone two. As he kicks the ball down towards the centre wing. Fisted away. Good take by Holst, blocked nicely by Bradley. David Granger comes through, dishes out the hand pass to Ebert. Ebert uh, ends it forward. Tempted mark, Huppets down there, trying to get the ascendancy for Evans to break clear, but a good tackle, and the ball is on the ground. Only about 30 metres out from the Glenelg line, Port Adelaide line. 21 is Bradley. Umpire Des Foster. Harris. It was Kernahan that got the big fist. Belton. Supported very well. Gillip was it got it down towards Bradley, and Bradley will be awarded a free kick. Number 21, Craig Bradley. Puppets was unchecked, but the ball didn't carry to that player. And in actual fact, it's been marked by Stephen Barrett. In the back pocket, now the drop punt. Corner of the square. Granger first at the ball, overruns it. Leaves Robertson, clear the flick back. Doesn't go to anybody in particular. Taken up by Frost, the hurried left footer. Might find Carey. Greg Phillips, front spot. Giles on his hammer. Gets it over to Simons. Flicks the ball out towards the half forward line. Chance for Lannis. He's unloaded swiftly. Lots of pressure at the moment. Ebert, well done. Slam forward by Belton. And the bolter is Hoffner. Carey won't catch him. The hurry kick into the forward pocket floats towards the pocket. The discipline spoiled in by Coleman. Slams it over the line for a throw in. No pressure football at the moment. Five points the difference. Over half of the second quarter gone. As boundary umpire. Nev Shanahan throws it in. Big duck quickly, Marshall. Getting under the fall of it. Couldn't quite control it though, was McDermott. Belton can, he'll go short, finds uh, Alan Gill at the true half forward position, unchecked. Good checking then from the Tiger half back line. A spectacular mark uh, earlier on in the night series. The drop punt. Full face of goals, will it drift over? Goal umpire has a good look at it, he reckons it's all right. And uh, Peter Simon says that's good, he's got two. Port Adelaide 3-4, Glenelg 1-5. Good football by Alan Gill. And that's the second goal that Port Adelaide have registered in this the second quarter. They've been able to add two goals to, whereas Glenelg have yet to add to their first, tie, first quarter score, which was one, five, one goal five, and it still is, of course. Kinnear, the umpire. Brother of Kim Kinnear, the Port Adelaide wingman, a good palm down by Russell Johnson. Alan Gill, who's booted two for Port Adelaide, kicked off the ground by Ben Harris, down towards the left half forward flank. Running down there is number 28, Stephen Barrett for Glenelg. The pressure is put on that player and he's held without possession, according to umpire Kinnear. Well, I thought the rule was that if you were uh, attempting to control the ball, then you were actually in... Uh, in control. Oh, beautiful mark. Beautiful mark by the little fella in Alan Gill. What a terrific leap, this youngster. Not terribly tall. Five foot ten and a half, in actual fact. Down towards the centre half forward. Off hands it goes. Down there is Anthony Williams. Ben Harris. Belt. He caught one of those as well. Off towards the boundary line and out of play. 3 4 1 5. Port on top. 21 points, Bradley, 16, Marshall. As the throw in, at the back, Kernahan, doing a pushing and shoving, Granger goes forward and receives the free. He's within striking distance, kicks an enormous distance. Can he make it straight? Screw punt, off the side of the boot, into the forward pocket, the spoil good. The running Kernahan puts it into the open space, gives the bolt a Hein a chance. After him, equally as fast as Hoffner, Hein keeps the ball in. 
clever play, gets himself unloaded, stolen by Hafner. He's got all the space to move in at the moment with a drop punt down towards half forward. McFarlane in the front of the pack, taken out. And the back is Barrett. Over the line, throw in. Yes, Barrett loping along. He wasn't too certain as to what he was going to do if he got possession of the ball, and so he was fairly happy to uh, see that ball go out of play. Just about into the time-on period now as Granger, oh, beautiful palm backwards, but umpire uh, adjudicated that he infringed and the mark, the free kick will be taken by Kernahan. Stephen Kernahan. Huppets rove beautifully. Over it goes. Gill has kicked two. Up towards Evan, a good fist away by Kuhlman. The pressure's there now. The umpire has picked out a free kick, and it'll favour number 30 for Glenelg, who is Peter Maynard. Maynard from the inside, or takes the hand pass to McFarlane, goes wide to Kuhlman, and the full back line look to be combining well together at the moment. Over to Barrett. To McGuinness. Unloaded by Bradley, very swiftly close to the line. There he is. And we'll see a throw in. Good defence then by the wingman in Bradley. Kept the ball in the area. Holst. A hand pass astray. Kernahan taken on by Gill. He's come alive in this term. Got a bag of kicks at the moment. And plays on quickly to the speedster Bradley. The running Johnson supports. Puts the ball with a hard ball to control. Off hands. James. At the bottom, Coleman. And we'll see a bounce by umpire Rick Kinnear. No time on, of course, in the uh, first half. 20 minutes gone. 11 points the difference. In favour of Port Adelaide at the moment. Ben Harris up. Corns with the ball. Inside the square. Giles versus Simon. Simons gets there quickly. And as well, Johnson. Peter Simons. Absolute uh, persistence. Gets it over. Here's a chance now for McGuinness. The wide hand pass is good. Back to Simons. Caught. Too slow. Ebert the tackler, and through comes Hofner again, beginning to dominate on that wing as he goes long with a drop punt to the goal face. Evans versus Coleman. Coleman front spot, and the ball hustled over the line for one point. Three goals, five Port Adelaide, one five the Bays. Yes, and Keith Coleman playing an absolute crackerjack game here tonight. He's kept uh, Tim Evans down to exactly no score. Keith Coleman's. Siren time, three goals, five. Port Adelaide at half time, leading Glenelg, 1 5. And Port Hill Glenelg scoreless in that quarter. Uh, they went into the quarter, one goal, 5 11, and that's what they are at half time. Port leading 3 5, 23 to 1 5 11. Goal kickers to the stage, Alan Gill with two, and um, Ben Harris, one for Port Adelaide, four Glenelg. Only one goal kicker, and that is Michael Lunnis. We'll take a break now and be back with Brenton Miles with his analysis of the second quarter. Certainly, Glenelg under intense pressure at half time, held scoreless uh, in that second quarter by a very, very good Port Adelaide combination. Glenelg tried valiantly. They, uh, they didn't lose any enthusiasm. Their handball was still uh, flowing well. In fact, they forced the ball uh, into their forward line areas on numerous occasions. But it's, uh, it came across the problem that so many sides have found with Port Adelaide this season. And that is the very, very brilliant centre-half back line that Port Adelaide have each week. It starts with Phillips at centre-half back, and we've mentioned several times during the replay that he is undoubtedly South Australia's best centre-half back. He's flanked by two very good players in Giles and Robertson, and Glenelg is certainly finding those three players across the half-back half line very, very difficult to pass. If they get it uh, into the full forward area, looking for the likes of Kernahan, Seabone and whatever, then Danny Hughes is there to repel the, uh, the attacks when they get up to that area. It's a very, very hard, and it's a point that uh, coach John Howard will need to give plenty of thought to at half-time, and that is just how to penetrate more often and more effectively that very, very tight defence of the Port Adelaide side. Glenelg have had some good players. Kernahan's played well, what a brilliant uh, young player he is, and possibly even a future McGarry medalist, such as the brilliance of this young player. He's battled valiantly. Graham Corns, again, we must mention at half-time because of his uh, effervescent form at centre-half back. McGuinness has roved uh, pretty well, and they've had other good players like Keith Coleman at full-back, who's uh, certainly battled under plenty of uh, tight odds. Gill has been a good player for Port Adelaide across centre half forward. He kicked two goals in that quarter uh, and he really set that forward line uh, apart. Uh, 
in that uh, second half in particular, in that second uh, quarter in particular. Granger's influence was telling too. He came onto the field at the end of that first quarter, played brilliantly across the centre half forward line, and he was the spark too that the Port Adelaide uh, side needed in that attacking area. It's, uh, it promises to be a very interesting second half of football. The Nerg will need to come out of their uh, change trees at half time, fired up, ready to produce a great third quarter, because they're certainly under pressure at this point. The 1982 Escort Cup heralds the return of night football to South Australia, and the game under lights is just another step in the evolution of our great game from its hesitant beginnings. In fact, the game was invented by a New South Welshman, Thomas Wentworth Wills, as a pastime for cricketers to keep fit in winter. Although various disorganised forms of football were played on the gold mines in the 1840s and 50s, Wills, his cousin H.C.A. Harrison and a small group of others, helped draw up the first rules of the game, based on what was probably the first recognisable match in 1858 between Scotch College and Melbourne. There were 40 players aside, but the ground was far from congested because the goalposts were half a mile apart and there were no defined boundaries. It was agreed the side to first score two goals would be the winner, an easy enough task by today's standards, but though the game raged from noon to dusk on three Saturdays, the single goal scored by Scotch three hours into the first day was the only score, and the game was abandoned as a draw. Two years after that, the first recorded game was played in South Australia between teams from the Adelaide Football Club. One of the earliest games to be filmed was the 1909 VFL Grand Final at the Melbourne Cricket Ground. Before 36,700 fans, South Melbourne defeated Carlton in a game far different from today's style of play. As the game spread around Australia, so the rules were modified to improve and speed up play. In 1905, at a meeting attended by representatives from all states and New Zealand, it was decided to set up the Australasian Football Council to control the sport. The council has gone through several name changes, and today is known as the National Football League of Australia. And while the Australian football evolution continues, if you think night football is a recent development, you'll be surprised to know the first night game was played more than 100 years ago. In 1879, at the Melbourne Cricket Ground, Collingwood Artillery played East Melbourne. Lighting was devised by a Professor Pepper, who erected light poles around the boundary fence. A white football was used, but because of the wet, muddy conditions, play had to be stopped frequently to clean the ball. Although 12,000 people attended that game, the experiment was far from successful. 103 years later, night football is here to stay, as league clubs compete for honour and glory and a share of the big prize money. And after another two quarters of football, we'll know which team will write another page in our football history by winning the 1982 Escort Cup. Umpire Rick Kinnear holds the ball aloft to get the third term underway with the Magpies after the last long break, 12 points ahead as Carey takes Johnson out. Some changes, Weston inside of the square, Holst is there as well, Weston again, back to Holst and the long kick towards the half forward line for the Tigers. Good mark, Johnny Painter. One of the forward pocket, the left footed Rover is on the half forward flank. The long screw punt. Towards full forward, Danny Hughes, front spot, played a great game in that last line of defence. Greg Phillips, Craig Ebert. Working hard was Lannis, taken out of the game quickly. The tangle of players, finally out comes Ebert. Played a good game in that back pocket, well directed, and finds Maxi James. Gets the ball over quickly to Giles, too slow. Top tackle, Weston. Ebert comes out with a handball that cracks the game open as he gets it over to Huppets to Belton, and through comes Granger. And the love him or his hate him, as you say, but the kick is skillful, over to Gill. Kick two goals in the second term, and goes long with this kick. Slightly offline though, out of bounds, and uh, we'll see a kick in at the full back line for the Tigers. Yes, and David Granger has played a very useful game this evening. He's given uh, Port Adelaide some True drive across the half forward line, and there's the player in question taking the mark. The most underrated footballer is David Granger. I believe he possesses great skills as he kicks the ball in towards the centre full forward position. Corns fists it away. Bradley got it across to Harris. Harris has a kick in towards the square. It's running free. The umpire's whistle is gone, and consternation. Uh, 
develops at the full forward position, but it's Keith Coolman who doesn't get the free kick. In actual fact, he gave it across there to Ian Hyde. Or possibly Stephen Barrett towards centre-half back. It is Kerry anyway, but he doesn't take it. Weston certainly does. Tackled quickly by James. Back he comes to possession of the gain. He couldn't gain it. Glenelg work it forward, looking for Kernahan. It's knocked away from that player by Phillips. One of the best men on the ground uh, this evening is uh, Greg Phillips. The running ball goes out of play. 3-5, 1-5, Port Adelaide on top. And at the moment, they've got their eyes well and truly set on $20,000. Steve Kernahan, the ball taken off hands by Ebert. Kick close to the boundary line, James, Carey. James, fast to recover. Gets the hand pass over, trying to flick it forward is uh, Tony McGuinness. Grab one up in possession, and from centre wing takes his free. He'll be looking towards half forward. Left foot, a tumble punt kick. Falls short. Good mark by Johnston. All over the place at the moment, this Ruckman. Ebert, the hurried kick, too short. Into Kernahan. Good grab by Robertson, maintains balance. Over to Hine, and the left footer. Towards full forward. At the back. Hughes played a disciplined game at fullback. Giles, Hughes again, used the balance in the battle of the speedsters. Both to ground. Marshall, Bradley. Marshall with a socceroo type uh, kick gets it a good 30 metres down. And then the defensive hand pass goes to the line. We see a throw in in front of the board. No change yet. 12 points the difference. Slight favour of uh, kicking in to the left hand side of your screen. It's uh... It's a night for rugs, actually, at uh, Norwood Oval as the ball goes in towards the right full forward pocket. Taken off hands quickly, the kick away by Ebert. Slipping across there and taking the mark is McGuinness. Number eight, State Rover, Tony McGuinness. Hasn't been as dominating as we've seen him in uh, previous escort games, but he's still a very useful performer this evening. He's within kicking distance. He feels he can kick the distance. The kick is on its way, but it's not straight enough. It's certainly long enough, but it's on the wrong side of the goalpost, and it's through for one behind. And Glenelg deed goals, not behinds. One six three five. Port Adelaide on top. Yes, appear to be booting the game away at the moment. Bad kicking. It's not winning kicking. Guinness again, picked up by Hubbards. Gets the kick inside the square. Twirls, Corns trouble Ben Harris Corns recovers quickly inside the square the hand pass or oh, quick gets the left footer down towards the half forward line Huppets takes him on he puts uh, Tony McGuinness down this is the young man that uh, represented the state this year the player that uh, had a kick just a moment ago and uh, Dwayne Russell about to come on as an interchange Broken bootlace, look at Corns as he gets the ball up inside the square, the tumble punt kick there, and the hard attack on the player has put him down. Kick falls short, almost the mark, not paid. Huffets, ducks and wheeze, gets his way out, goes short accurately, Craig Bradley. Come to the time clock, seven minutes gone, third term. Bradley again goes short, sees the leading Russell Ebert and finds him. Half back flank. Magpie's about to make a change. Uh, Ivan Eckerman coming off and uh, young Dwayne Russell. 17 years of age and about six foot four. The ball at centre wing for a throw in. Yes, it looks as though Ivan Eckerman has got a cork around the calf area. At the outer side of the oval, it's Craig Bradley, number 21, bringing the ball clear. He's plenty of pressure, but he does that cleverly. Weaved his way through two opponents. Down ground goes the ball, number 55 for Glenelg is David Frost and fists it out of play. 3-5-1-6, 23-12. Port on top seven minutes into the third quarter. Oh, beautiful interception there by Bradley as he thumps the ball down looking for Evans. Coolman, possibly Glenelg's best player this evening, fists the ball towards the boundary line and it's out of play. Evans so far is a scoreless for Port Adelaide. Gee, do you reckon that Craig Bradley's got some toe? Tons of push. And good skills. Oh, tremendous footballer, Bradley. Tremendously impressed with that player. A state player, of course. Ball on the halfback flank. Happens another one that's played very well for Port Adelaide this evening. Belt also in there and has contributed valiantly. Hoffner tries to fist a body of player aside. Anthony Williams, number nine, as he likes to be called, is out of play. Oops, Anthony, that's uh, not really what uh, mum and dad would like to see at home. However, out of play. 
Carey. Down it comes. Weston, clever football. Corns loses control. Lost control because the pressure was there. Mess of players, and we'll see a bounce. Rick Kinnear, in his first grand final as an umpire. Done pretty well tonight. Carey over the top. Williams. Huppets. The quick snapshot. One goal through one point. So Port Adelaide's turn to lose a bit of accuracy in front of goal 3 6. Glenelg 1 6. Difference of two goals. With Keith Coleman about to kick in. Been rumoured around South Australia that uh, Glenelg don't know how to win the tight ones. Job right in front of them at the moment. Magpie's a club full of tradition that says these are the games that you win at all times as Hulse takes even over the line and we'll see a throw in. David Hulse played very well. He's been given an obvious job and that's to look after four times McGarry medalist at Russell Ebert and he's doing it very well. The throw in. Down to Paul Weston. A brilliant tap by Peter Carey. Back towards Giles. Over his head. Greg Phillips. Tries the tap on. Misses. Johnny Painter after him. The quick kick forward. Chance for Giles. On the half volley can't do it. The hand pass to Sewer. Spent some time on the reserves bench. Gets the left footer. Down towards the goal square. Dongs the post. Out of bounds on the full. 3-6-1-6. Ten minutes into the third quarter. Danny Hughes to bring the ball back into play. Six foot three and 14 stone two is Danny Hughes as he kicks it out towards the half-back flank. Off hands it goes. Sewers across there, number 14, and out of play. Outer side of the oval. Kernahan versus 25 for Port Adelaide, who is uh, Johnson. Number 16 is David Marshall, and the mark has been taken by Max James. Max James, of course, who uh, went to South Melbourne and played with distinction. Suffered uh, some severe injuries. But at the moment, it's Johnny Painter of Glenelg, who kicks down towards a full forward position. Danny Hughes certainly has played very well. Both full backs this evening have put in a credible performance. Ian Hyde, 57 for Glenelg, gains possession of the ball. Gets the free kick, plays on rapidly. Over towards Stephen Kernahan, couldn't take the mark. John Seabom's in there. Taken here by uh, Giles. Giles, state halfback flanker, kicks out towards the centre wing, but it's uh, Barrett, Stephen Barrett, who thumps it back towards centre half forward. Gurnahan underneath it. No one can take the ball. Picked up quickly by Lunnis. Over to Carey. This should be a score. The kick is on its way, but it's not straight enough. I don't think we'll find it's through for one behind, and Glenelg cannot kick straight. 1 7, trailing Port Adelaide 3 6. Junior, reckon they've blown some chances too in front of the goal square. Certainly the number of points on the board shows bad kicking. The fullback, Danny Hughes. Long kick, tap forward by Johnson. A chance for Ebert. Hulse always on his hammer. Been there all night. Over to Bradley. Look at him run. The left footer into the forward pocket. The open space. Ben Harris, not known for speed. In there is young uh, Dwayne Russell. He's the young man uh, in centre screen at the moment. And he's just come onto the ground. Granger, interchange for the Tigers, coach Johnny Halbert uh, obviously worried about getting a bit of uh, slam in his forward line, off comes Johnny Seabone rejected and on goes uh, Chris Herco, the ball at the moment, at centre wing, Johnson, long Paul Belton, the man he's after doesn't find him, Corns there, here's a chance, a quick break by Ben Harris. Well read by Keith Corman, though. In the open space he goes. Hine. After him, Hafter. Good balance by Hine. Got away. The left footer is accurate. Over the top of the head, though. Robertson takes three on. Beats them all. Puts the ball into the forward pocket. A chance for Evans. A long way from full forward. Thought about the hand pass. Goes over the line. And we'll see Alan Roberts throw in from the boundary. Yes, Evans still to get a score. Carey. Corns. Back it goes to Carey. McGuinness. Picked it up nicely. David Hulse. Back to McGuinness it goes again from centre half back. Out towards Sewer. Sewer. And Ebert. Sewer still up there. Does it very well. Well played, Ralph. Over it goes. Hand pass over to McDermott. The opportunity for Kernahan. 
towards the boundary line and out of play. Well, Glenelg really don't appear to be doing quite enough and, Glen and uh, Port Adelaide seem to have their measure at the moment in the grand final. $20,000 goes to the winner. The throw-in, good tap. Can the Tigers convert? Hughes, the fresh man on is Herco. Close to the line, the left footer, oh, accurate and dangerous. Over the shoulder and how often do you see it? The quick kick. The opportunist half-forward flanker is Lunas. And the angle's pretty sharp. As you can see there, only a distance of 20 metres. But so close to that white line and appears to be going for the check side punt. That's right, he kicks it on the wrong end of the ball and slices the centre. A good kick from Lunas. Two goals, seven the Tigers. Port Adelaide, three, six. Two goals to Lunas. Good kick there from Lunas, the check side. And they had to get it too, there was no doubt about that. At that point in time, uh, that's a pretty foolish to say that they're in a bit of trouble because there's nothing in it, 24 to 19. But uh, Glenelg just don't seem to be doing quite enough and one gets the impression that at any stage of the game, Port Adelaide are going to take that, the game away. Kerry, Johnson, Painter. Painter out towards a half forward. Tony Giles going across and takes a good mark. Made the extra metre or two. Forward, looking for James, couldn't take it. Corns is over there, James comes back. Gains possession, kicks down towards Evans. Evans and Kuhlman. Kuhlman keeps Evans under plenty of pressure. Oh, the ball bounces awkwardly for that player. Belton goes in there where Angels fear to tread. And the defensive players of uh, Glenelg very, very happy to stop that to forward movement from Port Adelaide. Umpire Foster. He'll bounce the ball, a big pack of players uh, congregate. Carey, McFarland down there, number three. Goes in for possession of the ball again. 26 is Peter Hoffner of Port Adelaide and umpire Foster gets a little extra work. So a huge pack of players around this bounce. Dwayne Russell, 13, 30 for the Tigers is Maynard. In there is Dwayne Russell, will put the head where the boots were. Keeps the, keeps the ball in the area and we'll see a bounce. 26, Hoffner, 21, Bradley. There's the man that stuck his head where the boot Bark taken by David Great. Very good for the, uh, for the little amount of goals that have been kicked. Bradley across there, 21, couldn't take it. The quick hand pass along, Huppets is in there for Port Adelaide. Short kick out the front, good kick and a good mark taken by David Grater. Very good at a crowd and attendance here this evening. Somewhere in the vicinity of 15 to 17,000, I would think. As David Granger lines up the goals, the kick is on its way. It looks as though it's going right across the face of goals and out of play on the full. So Keith Coleman. Long kick, screw punt. Carey getting under the fall of the ball. A spoil is by Johnson, claimed by Weston and paid. Captain of the Tigers. With a drop punt, down towards centre wing. Greg Phillips against Kernahan. The spoil is always there. Hine from centre wing. One bounce, now tackled. The hurried kick forward. Over the top comes James, slams the defensive punch. Now's a chance for McDermott. He puts the ball in, but uh, the kick is offline through for yet another point to the... Tigers 2-8, trail Port Adelaide 3-7 in the third quarter of the grand final. Yes, and Anthony Williams has come off the ground and has gone on for Port Adelaide is Ivan Neckerman. As Gill brings the ball clear that uh, Neckerman is that's taking the mark, but I think you might find the ball is out of play on the full. And number 57, Ian Hine, who is one of Glenelg's better players this evening, kicks the ball and there's a crackerjack mark taken at centre-half back and a very, very good capture pulled in there by it. Johnson. Johnson out towards a half-back flank. Bradley. Huppets, number 19. And Craig Bradley will take the free kick. It's been a good duel uh, between Bradley and Marshall. Bradley, I would think, would be the victor, as Hoffman takes the mark on this occasion. That's also been an interesting duel between uh, that pl player, Hoffner and Hine. Robertson towards centre-half forward. Big pack of players down there. Off hands. Built. Granger. 
David Granger appealing for the free kick, couldn't get it. Over to Frost. Frost of Glenelg down towards Weston. Haven't seen a lot of Paul Weston tonight. He's the captain of uh, Glenelg and a very good footballer and an excellent leader. Kicks towards centre half forward for Carey and Carey takes the mark. I don't know who was more surprised then, Peter Carey or uh, some of the supporters. But the mark is there. 18 minutes in the third quarter of the grand final. The Escort Cup, the winner gets $20,000. The loser gets $10,000 as the big long kick goes in by Kerry. And there's a good mark taken back in defence for Port Adelaide. This is Russell Johnston. He'll play on straight away. He'll go wide. His target, Greg Phillips, over the top. Holst, good mark. He's the man that's marking Russell Ebert tonight. Did it to perfection in the grand final last year. Obviously the same task tonight. So, between the half-forward flank and the forward pocket, kick not long. In front of the goal square, Johnson at the back, goes the slam forward. Players charging through the pack, Weston checks that player, and uh, perhaps in the back, it's one for the viewer at home to have a think about. And Craig Ebert, the young man that's played so well in that back pocket. Disciplined game, done everything right. The drop punt wide. Flick forward by James, the receiver, cunning uh, Kernahan. The tumble punt kick, waiting is Greg Phillips. Oh, lost the ball. Very quick movement then by uh, Sewer. Puts the ball in long, but Hughes is the player that's got it. Into the open space, Paul Belton's got the chance on the half uh, back line. He's got Robertson there if he wants him, but beautifully done, young Hine. Keeps the ball in the area, slams it over the line for a throw in. Oh, he's played well as uh, Ian Hine, number 57 for Glenelg. Very consistent performance, a very even performance. Johnson, Kernahan, Kernahan got the palm. McGuinness was over there. Belt goes in to tackle Weston. Doesn't achieve it. Johnson. Kernahan again. Taps it out. Forward. Giles. And the mark has been taken by Chris McDermott. McDermott from inside the square. Looks to play on. Looks long. Hughes. Johnson. Oh, there's a player in the middle that's grabbed that one. It could be young Kernahan. Or is it Carey? Yes, this is Peter Carey, appears to have been shifted to half forward. And uh, that's a good move by coach John Halbert. Not getting any thrust through that half forward line. Put the biggest player on the ground there, and this is the man. Hasn't kicked straight this time, splits the centre. A much needed one, and the Tigers take the lead by one point. One goal, one to Peter Carey. And it's been an interesting duel as uh, Tony Giles kicked it clear and the mark was taken there by number 10, who is uh, Chris McDermott. And McDermott's kick goes straight back down towards centre-half forward and the big fella comes down with it and Peter Carey. Centre bounce down. Into the time on period and Glenelg have taken the lead for the first time. Tap away. Belton takes it. Belton down towards... Uh, David Granger area. Number 13 is uh, Russell, Dwayne Russell. Scott Bradley's kicked down, Huppets is over there and nicely knocked away, out of play. Right full forward pocket and we, we can't be far off time on. In actual fact, I think you'll find we're into time on. 21.06. Thank you. He's the boy that causes a bit of colour in the game. This is Granger. Look at Corns take him on straight away. Well, I think this, uh, to be fair to David Granger on that occasion, Graham Corns had only one thing in mind, and that was to upset David Granger. Dwayne Russell looking free, but doesn't find him. The hand pass is good. Holst, the left footer, down towards half forward. Greg Phillips will get under the fall of the ball, and the mark is paid. These two, great battle. Tall Ruckman against a superb halfback. Almost 50 seconds into time on. 15 metres. So Carey has to come inside the square. 15 metres that this man doesn't have to kick. Plays on. Gets the hand pass over to Giles. Halfback flanker. Goes long. He'll be looking for Evans. Coleman will be looking for him. Tap down. Ben Harris, the left footer. Nobody home in front of the goal face. And a tumble punt kick goes over the line and we'll see a a kick in from David Marshall, ranging a long way down from his centre wing position. 
with a drop putt. Ebert, front spot, at the back, Bradley, over the top of him, Kernahan. The Tigers, charge forward, McDermott, down towards the half forward line, Carey, Phillips, what a battle that's going to be. Giles, the left footer short or not well directed. The hurried left footer from centre wing then, looking for and finding Sua inside the square. Sua back with a centre half forward. Point the difference. Glenelg on top. Nearly 23 minutes into the third quarter of the grand final as the ball goes out of play in the left full forward pocket. Three eight three seven, and there's Siren time. So at the end of the third quarter, the Tigers lead by one behind. Three goals eight to three goals seven. Flanelg holds scoreless in the second quarter, back in front now by only a point. One quarter of football remains to decide who is going to be the winner of the 1982 Escort Cup. We'll take a break right now and uh, be back after this break with uh, Brenton Miles' analysis of the third quarter. Whenever you are, right? Well, we can expect uh, grand finals to be very tight games, and this one is certainly no exception. It's tight because the uh, players are prepared to tackle hard, they're pre prepared to work uh, in combinations of two and three and make it very difficult for uh, their opponents to win kicks. It's tight because the smother is there, the tackle is there, all the skills are being applied uh, by two very, very good sides. That's mirrored in the scoreboard, only 3-8 to 3-7, very low scoring given that we've played three quarters of football. Some interesting moves by John Halbert in that uh, third quarter particularly the move of Kerry to centre-half forward, and it was a matter of robbing Peter to pay Paul, I think, because Kerry had played so well in ruck and created so many opportunities there. But full credit to Halbert because he had to do something in that forward zone. They were getting the ball into that forward area on many, many occasions, but uh, they weren't able to convert those opportunities into scores. But uh, they did in the final minutes of that, to a final section of that third quarter. Uh, Seabone was just taken off the ground, Herke came, came onto the ground and played at full forward and with Carey uh, the Glenelg forward line took on a new dimension and certainly played better in the last five to ten minutes of that third quarter. The result is that at three quarter time the Bays one point up so what a great last quarter it promises to be. Stay with us.
the difference in the grand final 26 to 25 Glenelg leading at the moment Port Adelaide going to the left hand side of your screen and Glenelg going to the right hand side of your screen of course as the, quickly the ball is brought out of play Granger over there who was mixed up in a small uh, disagreement with uh, Graham Torns in the third quarter gets the free kick 21 minutes plus time on the victor receives $20,000 and, of course, the beautiful Escort Cup as the kick goes in towards centre-half forward. Position a beautiful, an excellent mark taken at centre-half forward. And my word, this young lad has played very, very well tonight. Ben Harris has made the most of his opportunities. Big, tall boy, 6 foot 4, 14 stone 8 as he kicks the ball right towards the square. Evans, who has been held absolutely scoreless so far in the game got the hand pass across there to Peter Maynard that was Graham Forbes that got it over Barrett Stephen Barrett towards a halfback flank and uh, my word hasn't David Hulse played very well but the man that he's checking tonight is Russ Liebert four times McGarry medalist on this occasion has kicked the ball out of play on the full and so the opportunity goes to Glenelg to be brought back into play by McFarlane yes the business end of a grand final the last quarter side that really commits themselves will really have the best result at the end of this uh, 21 minutes plus time on us corns goes wide beautifully done by robertson chasing him will be high and he's the speeder that's uh, played well on the center wing for the tigers the ball right in front of the scoreboard that shows the tigers one point ahead so western one 12 james western the tap the kick forward then by harris into an open pocket there is Gill. He's the player that's kicked two goals so far for the Magpies. We'll see a throw in by boundary umpire Alan Roberts. Carey versus Harris. The hurried kick forward towards centre wing. Robertson come down from his half back flank. He's on the half forward line at the moment and kicks long distances. A tumble punt kick will fall short and a good mark taken in the last line. That player appears to be uh, Barrett. Gill, 27. With a drop punt. All magpies. Robertson. Kick back to where it came from. Marshall. Marshall at centre half back. Only three goals uh, to Port Adelaide and three goals to Glenelg. And Glenelg on top at the moment as David Hulse couldn't take the mark. Badly is over there. Put it out in the front for Ebert to have a run at it. But Hulst is over there. He's got other thoughts in mind. So has David Granger, of course. Over to it. Oh, quick as a flash. Over it goes to Bradley. Bradley's kick at the goals and the scores are locked. 3 8 apiece. Two minutes into the last quarter of the Escort Cup. The grand final, of course. Commentary team this evening is Dennis Eri and Aiken and Bretton Miles. Keith Coleman to go short and accurately picks out Graham Corns. He goes much longer with a hand pass to Maynard. The quick kick towards centre wing. Puppets can't do it. Kernahan can. The hand pass over. With the long pass even further. He's looking for Sewer inside the square. The left footer sweeps around down towards the half forward line. Eckerman versus Johnny Painter off both hands. Craig Ebert against Lannis, taken out, good shepherd. Lannis, the hand pass over quickly. He's out there looking for McGuinness, finds him, the left footer, seeks the full forward, finds him. Top kick, beautiful kick. Ooh. Chris Herco came off the bench during the third term. And Johnny Seabone that uh, had been beaten by Danny Hughes at full forward. An impressive opening to the final term, his first charge at the ball. Let's see what he can do with this kick, drop, punt, 40 metres out. And split the centre, good kick from Chris Erko. And the Tigers take the lead by one goal. 4-8, Port Adelaide 3-8. Goal in it. And Glenelg, the side that uh, 
a lot of people consider are not good grand finalist players. And in the replay, it's McGuinness. And have a look at this kick. This is a beauty. Straight out the front to Herco. Herco got away from Danny Hughes, number 28. And the player didn't make any mistake when he kicked the goal. Back at the centre now, live, is McGuinness. And it's Glenelg taking all before them at the moment. As Kerry's over there. Good interception by Giles. Ball on the ground. Kerry slipped past the belt. The chance for Frost. Frost coming around. Decides to bounce. Looks down ground for Kernahan. But slipping across there is Herco. And Herco's given them plenty of drive at full forward. He was the last player to kick the goal, number 29, over towards centre half forward, behind as McGuinness couldn't take the mark, on the ground, Giles, out with the dynamite hand pass, Vic Johnson thumped it down towards centre half forward, in front is Gill, Corns, and there's a sense of urgency about Glenelg as they are chasing that $20,000, out in the half forward flank is the ball. Dwight Russell, number 13 for Port Adelaide, and the ball is on the ground. Corner of the square for a bounce. Johnny Painter is 11 for the Tigers. A quick call in by uh, Alan Gill in the forward pocket. Dwayne Russell, 13 for the Magpies. Big carry. In there, Dwayne Russell. Peter Maynard is 30. And we'll see another bounce. Yes, some urgency. Really has come into the Tiger game at the moment. And uh, Bradley towards Corns, out towards Western. He goes long. Lunnis versus Ebert. Ebert on the chest. Good mark to the youngster. A top game from uh, a youngster. This is Russell Ebert's brother in young Craig, really establishing himself as a player. So he goes towards Johnson. He can't hold the mark. The ball loose. Corns strongly. And the Magpies again. Under pressure as the ball is moved to their half-forward line. Eckerman. Kernahan's got him. Round the corner comes McGuinness. Looking for, but missing his half-forward flanker. In comes Herco. He's been a dynamo in this final term. Western the chance. The kick touched off the boot, goes through for the point. You know, 4-9, Port Adelaide 3-8. Second behind to Paul Weston. And there's no doubt about it, Glenelg are putting all into it at the moment. Naturally enough, it's a grand final. Herco got it across to Weston, and Weston's kick was blocked, but it was on the wrong side anyway. Back live, and here's the ball being ripped in towards the full forward position again. And it's Glenelg doing all the attacking at the moment. Port Adelaide have only been uh, forward on two occasions into their forward line. So, Glenelg are chasing that $20,000 in the Escort Cup as the ball comes back into play. Off hands, Hoffner, Johnson's in there, picked up by Craig Bradley. Plenty of pressures on him. Over it goes to Eckerman. Eckerman down towards centre half forward. Up goes and are taking a very good mark is number 13 in uh, Russell. Wayne Russell on the ground at the moment, an interchange player. A big long boot down towards Evans. Floating over the top was Granger. And yet again, number 55 is David Frost for Glenelg taking the ball clear. The chance now for Belton. Belton has got a, an opportunity to give it over, and he does it very well to Bradley. Bradley plays on quickly, and the kick goes right up towards the square. Evans and Kuhlman jostle, shove and push, but it's gone through for one behind. Well, normally a straight kick is Craig Bradley. He's unhurried and not without pressure, and there's the score on your screen as the ball is kicked out. Good mark taken by Johnny Painter. Between half-back and the back pocket. Left footer goes short, wide, corns. Back flank. Looking to control the game now, the Tigers. They put the ball, kick it well to position. Big Carey versus Phillips over towards Belton. He goes with a tumble punt kick. Nobody home though across the half forward line for the Magpies as Dwayne Russell slams the hand pass out. A chance for Granger. Grabbed high. And the chance goes to David Granger, the half forward, about 40 metres out directly in front. So, seven points the difference at the moment. Almost ten minutes gone, final term, and a straight kick will make it four points the difference. Deliberate shot. Could be off the side of the boot somewhat, as the goal umpire has to move too far in uh, goal umpire Ray Mule's one point. So it's only one straight kick the difference, six points. Yes, and the second behind to David Granger. He's played a very good game this evening in the grand final. Goal the straight. 
one straight goal as uh, Ashley Mackay, the uh, runner for Port Adelaide, getting plenty of work tonight as Graham Corns brings the ball back into play. Kerry is across there, picked up very quickly by Robertson to Huppets. Huppets kick is going to go awfully close with Coolman's back there, comes off hands and one behind. I thought that there might have been a possibility of a free kick to Tim Evans, but not so. Five points the difference. Keith Coleman about to kick in. Bit of pressure building now. Port Adelaide coming back. Tigers open beautifully in the final term. Paul West on the mark on the halfback flank. With a drop punt down towards centre wing. Robertson, Kernahan at the back. Greg Phillips again the discipline spoil. Over the line throw in. Ten minutes gone. Final term. Alan Roberts the throw in from the boundary. Ebert waits at the back, doesn't come his way. Holst is there as well, Hine. The left footer comes around to the half forward line, but uh, Greg Phillips, the second grab, takes a comfortable mark on his half back flank. Half back line for the Magpies, really has played well. The half forward line is the one that's in doubt at the moment as pressure begins to build there. Sewell goes over the top of uh, Dwayne Russell. A tangle of players at the moment, kick hot off the ground. Could have been kicking in danger. Kernahan, he's clear, gets the hand pass over. Can Tony McGuinness pick it up? Pressure builds against him. Play on his call. As Phillips goes wide. The charge is on by Chris Herco. He's lifted his game from full forward. After him, Hughes. Misses him. He breaks clear and kicks towards the goal square. Greg Phillips is the one under the fall of the ball. He flicks it on forward. Plays all over the place at the moment. Giles. Taken away by Ebert. He goes towards centre wing. Bradley sets uh, Marshall oh, over the top. Mark. Mark. Great mark, Craig Bradley. Oh, top stuff by uh, Craig Bradley. Over the top of a usual high leaping Marshall with a long screw punt. Down towards half forward. Corns. Mark not paid. Evans a long way from home. Round the corner comes uh, Maynard, and he'll clear. Oh, what a top mark, but it's Kerry now. It got it across to Pater. Pater out towards the centre wing, and it's Weston taking it, and it's Glenel moving the ball methodically into their forward line. Very quickly now as Chris McDermott puts it down ground. Eckerman should have been awarded a free kick, and he's got one. Ivan Eckerman. And the defence of Port Adelaide are under extreme pressure at the moment. Eggerman's kick towards a half-back flank. Johnson. Ball on the ground. Sewer, if he breaks clear, there'll be danger. Pressure's on him. He pads it away. The opportunity now for Ebert. Ebert across towards Huppets. Huppets has got the chance to kick down ground towards Bradley. And behind, Bradley goes back for possession. Got to get a free kick, surely. No. Umpire Foster calls play on. Well, here's the opportunity now for Peter Maynard of Glenelg. Down towards centre, full forward position. And Ivan Eckerman, cool as ice. Gets the hand pass away and gets it over to Ebert. He'll be looking wide. The man he's after, Dwayne Russell. And a good mark, but uh, a push before the uh, fall of the ball. And Peter Maynard has played the free at centre wing. Five points the difference at the moment. Maynard, short. David Marshall, broken loose. Between centre wing and half forward line. Marshall, incredible leaper. With a drop punt down towards his half forward spot. Almost Kernahan, not paid. Yes, says umpire Rick Kinnear. And here's a chance for the youngster. Young Stephen Kernahan. Second season league football. Great shot of him there. State player under 16. Till Cup. State reserves player and now makes the league side at half forward and as a ruckman 50 meters out all the wind has swung that away at the last moment so one point six points now the difference between the two sides in the grand final of the escort cup Stephen Kernahan second behind and Danny Hughes who's played so well up until the last quarter and now it's Chris Herco, and a very handsome 15 metre penalty paid in favour of Port Adelaide as uh, Danny Hughes rips the ball in towards the centre position, looking for Russell Johnson, couldn't find him, battered down there by Huppets, kicked off the ground. Ebert, who has been kept uh, very, very quiet all night by David Hulse, gets the kick down towards the half forward line. Pack of players, McFarland, 
umpire calling the play on. Bradley got it out to Hoffner. Hoffner has a long blazing shot into goals and you couldn't get any closer than that. Nearly smacked the post in half. Hit the top of the goal post and one behind. Here's the ball coming off the ground. And Hoffner. Follow the flight of the ball. Whack right on the top. How do you like that? Well, as, Alan Fr as Frost puts the ball out wide. Interchange. Peter Simons comes on for the Tigers. The ball's on the half forward line for the Magpies and we'll see a bounce. 16, Paul Belton, black and white. 30, there's the youngster, Ben Harris. He's only played about five games, league football. He's going to find out what a grand final about. It's all, all at once. Sewer. Hand pass wide. He's looking out there looking for Hine. Robertson after him. Hine picks the ball up. The hurry kick forward. Finds the man that's just come off the bench. In Simons. Gets it over to his captain, Weston. The left footer. Danny Hughes front spot. The spoil is good by Herco. Hughes battles it out. Back comes Weston. Grabbed by Eckerman. Big heap of players. We'll see a bounce. Top pressure at the moment by both sides. Five points the difference. 15 minutes gone. You wouldn't wish for a better grand final. Coonahan, McDermott, Ebert. Goes the safety of the line with a hand pass. And uh, umpire Rick Kinnear will know what it's all about too. He's umpiring his first grand final. Left full forward pocket. Russell Johnson, 25, over the top was Phillips. Ball on the ground. Huppets, very close to being man of the match as Huppets tonight. Hoffner has possession now. Kicks it clear. Robertson, Carey, tackled late. Right towards the square goes the ball off hands. Hercock got a cross. Weston has a look. It's a long, blazing kick. Huppets having trouble making the distance. And Ebert's back there. Holz keeps him in pressure. Right across the face of goals it goes, but he knows what he's doing. He gets uh, Eckerman. Hine. Back it goes to Simmons, number nine. Robertson there, Simmons gets the free kick. Number nine for Glenelg as the minutes are ticking away. 35 to 30 with Glenelg on top. Back towards the centre full forward position. Hoffner. But it's Peter Carey lurking back there. Lurking or lumbering, it doesn't matter. The kick goes up. Hughes is over there. Is it through? Yes, it is. Through for another behind. So, one goal, the difference in the grand final. And Danny Hughes about to kick in. From fullback, straight down the centre. Carey, good body work, and the gentle giant takes the chest mark at the true half forward position. Magpies in trouble. Tigers beginning to lift their game in about seven minutes of football remaining. He'll be looking towards the galloping Herco. Simons is the boy that he's after, finds him. Talented youngster, usually a half forward flanker for uh, the Tigers. Peter Carey in trouble with an ankle, it seems, inside the square, but Peter Simons is the man of the moment with a screw punt. Puts it straight to the goal face, a huge pack of players slammed off uh, hands. Hits the point post and we'll see a throw in. Six points the difference. The next goal critical to either side. Sewer taps it forward and taken up by Hughes. Here goes short or oh, disaster. For the Magpies off the side of the boot, over the line and gives uh, the left footer in Sewer a chance from the line. He plays on straight away, decreases the angle, puts the ball to the square. The kick is a beauty, straight through the centre, and it's two goals the difference, Glenelg in front. Uh, good goal by Ralph Sewer, the most, uh, most experienced footballer is Sewer. And that nearly could be enough. That nearly could be enough. 3-12, 5-12, banners in the background. Not a lot of time left in the grand final. By Foster has control of the game as has Rick Kinnear, Russell Johnson. Immediately Glenelg take the ball out of the centre, Hoffner back there.
looks for support. Kicks rather blind. Ian Hine couldn't take it. Here's a chance now for number 13, who is Russell of uh, Port Adelaide. Down ground. Max James is over there. Good, strong pack of players going for possession of the ball, but there'll be a bounce down. 12 points the difference in the Escort Cup Grand Final. $20,000 to the winner, $10,000 to the loser, and the beautiful Escort Cup trophy as the kick ball is kicked down towards a half-forward flank. Port Adelaide don't seem to be doing quite enough at the moment. Granger. Going down is uh, Maynard, and he will get a free kick. Yes, this is the line, I think, the half-forward line for the Magpies, where they really are lacking that sharpness and attack on the ball. And the Bay half-back line's really beginning to bounce it out of there. And so lack uh, stopping the Magpies from scoring. To set a wing. At the back, Hawks played a superb game on Ebert. Cut him right out of the game for the night. Hofner, Simons, against him, Ebert. He's played a good game. He'll go short to the line. It's over the line, and we'll see a kick in from Peter Simons. Peter Simons, who's been very useful since coming onto the ground after sitting on the interchange. As you can see, we're uh, nearly into the time on period as the clock ticks away up towards the 20 minute, 21 minute mark and then there's only time on left. Tony Giles, excellent mark under pressure. Over it goes to Hughes. Hughes has support in Huppets. Huppets has been a very busy rover all night long. Over to Belton, who started off in splendid touch in the uh, first half of the game. Fell out a little bit. And Frost pads the ball towards the line. David Frost, number 55. Now we're into the time on period. And if Port Adelaide's to get up and win this now, it'll be an unbelievable finish. He's ripping in there as John Painter. Over towards McGuinness. McGuinness has got support from Frost. And immediately Glenelg take the ball into their forward line. The kick goes from Frost right up forward. And it's a desperate Danny Hughes who knocks the ball through for one behind. 2-1 the difference. That's three goals Port Adelaide have got to get. And I'm not a punter, but I'd nearly, nearly go for Glenelg. Well, let's see what uh, will really happen now, because Port Adelaide's back's against the wall. The kick is casual. Johnny Painter takes advantage of it. Chris Herco has been dynamic since he's come in. He's got another one, and Port Adelaide beginning to, to uh, wilt under the pressure. The Tigers beginning to rampage home with a great result. Look at the slack kick that came out. Johnny Painter quickly gets it up. Chris Herco balances, takes one look, and straight through the centre. And a good goal to the Tigers. 6-13, Port Adelaide, 3-12. Well, it'll be a long, sad, dismal drive down Port Road tonight for many supporters. 6-13 to 3-12. There's one thing about Port Adelaide supporters, they're top losers. 49 to 30. Glenelg have got the Escort Cup in their keeping. Belton. Free kick. Taken by Belton. Belton. Down towards centre half forward position, McFarlane, who's played a very useful game tonight. And here's the opportunity for Alan Gill, who's kicked a couple up onto this occasion. That's his third. And Alan Gill has got the third goal for Port Adelaide. Is there a chance? And there it is, McFarlane made a mistake, went through his hands. And uh, Gill, who is a very accurate kicker for goals, has put through his own personal uh, third goal. And that's a good performance, three out of four. But the sands of time is running out. Cannot be much time left as your clock on the right-hand side of your screen shows. The bounce. Carey, Johnson, Belton comes forward. Corns. Blocked. Inside the square. Holst. Desperation slams the ball out wide. Gives the opportunity to Pete Maynard. The left footer pushes the ball down towards his half-forward line. Kernahan, the spoil. Huppet's taken down and out. In goes Hoffner. And again, a tangle of players. And we'll see a bounce. Time ticking away for the Magpies. The Tigers sensing a victory. The Escort Cup. And take the coin down Anzac Highway. It'll be on down at the club room tonight as the boys fly high. Belton. Huppet's. 
has to get a move on. Cut out beautifully by uh, Paul Weston. He's played a good game. Steady, controlled, and has come alive in this second half. From inside the square, long to the forward pocket, Chris Herco, hero of the final turn. There's the siren. The Nelga have done it. Just proved the fact that uh, they can't uh, win grand finals. Glenelg, six goals, 13, 49. Port Adelaide, four goals, 12, 36. Coach Johnny Halbert said they really wanted to win this one, and win it they did. It reverses that uh, 1981 loss where uh, Glenelg were just not good enough for Port Adelaide in the SANFL grand final of 81. Tonight in the Escort Cup 1982, they are the victors, and uh, proud they might well be too, as the thousands of fans rush out onto the ground. Paul Weston, nobody's played harder than him all night. Glenelg, the 1982 Escort uh, Cup champions, and with it, of course, uh, the money. $36,000 in total at Glenelg pickup. Port Adelaide, valiant in defeat. They never put in a bad game. Uh, but tonight, it was Port Adelaide. Uh, it was Glenelg's night. Uh, Port pick up $26,000 for runners-up, but, uh, well, who wants to be a runner-up? It's a sad, uh, a sad occasion for a lot of Port supporters, but... Uh, but Glenelg, it's their moment. We'll take a break now and be back with a presentation of Czechs and the 1982 Escort Cup after this break. Ladies and gentlemen, to present the 1982 Escort Cup, I'll call on the president of the SANFL, Mr. Max Bashir, and from WDNHO Wills, the region manager, Robert Dakin. Thank you very much, Graham. I think, I think, ladies and gentlemen, that we've just seen one of the best matches of night football that we've seen here for many, many days. I congratulate both of the clubs on the exhibition they put on tonight. And when you consider that this is being telecast throughout Victoria, New South Wales and in Brisbane, I think you'll see that it was a high quality game. I have much pleasure in calling upon Greg Phillips on behalf of Port Adelaide to accept a cheque from Mr Robert Dakin of the Wills Company. Welcome Greg. It's, uh, it's been a great night for you. It's uh, your first Escort Cup final. You didn't win it, but it was a great game. And I'd like to congratulate you and your team, and I'd like you to accept the runners-up check for $10,000 with my compliments. The second presentation tonight is that to the man of the match. And this has been adjudicated upon and been won by that very popular player, Peter Carey. Peter. Thank 
Thanks very much, uh, Max. Congratulations to Port Adelaide for a magnificent effort, but it was the year of the tiger. It's going to be at the end of the year too. Thanks very much. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my pleasure to ask Mr Dakin, who is the South Australian manager for WD and HO Wills, and that company has made this whole uh, competition possible by their generosity in making available the prize money uh, for the competition. Uh, I'd like to ask Mr Dakin to present the cheque to the winner, $20,000, to Paul Weston of Glenelg. Congratulations to Paul Weston and his uh, club on a great victory tonight. I noticed from the records that uh, at the end of last year they were runners-up. Perhaps tonight's performance is a good omen for the end of the year, and I wish you and your club the best of luck, and I'd like you to accept my company's cheque with my compliments. Congratulations. Well, yes. uh, I'd just like to thank Mr Dakin very much uh, for putting on such a wonderful competition uh, throughout this winter. It was certainly a great pleasure to, to be a part of this competition. Commiserations to Port Adelaide. We certainly, we, though they certainly put up a wonderful effort uh, during the competition and we certainly know how they feel. But it's great to be on the winning side and uh, let's hope this is a start for, for greater things to come. Once again, well, once again, thanks very much to the Escort Company. Thank you. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Escort Company, the Escort Cup to be presented to Glenelg. And a very elated Paul Weston, uh, and a lot of Glenelg players and supporters absolutely thrilled with their team's performance. A lot of people said, uh, could they do it in the clinch? Could they win the tough ones? Could they win the finals? Well, tonight they certainly proved they could do it. And from a very cold Norwood Oval, uh, all the players will, will uh, now take a well-earned shower. Bad luck to Port, they uh, played it well. They weren't good enough on the uh, night. Congratulations, Glog, 1982 Escort Champions. And that just takes us away, about takes us away from the 1982 Escort Cup. I'd like to thank you very much for your uh, company and uh, assistance all the way along. And on behalf of our producer, Mike Williams, and uh, director, Lou Sedevy, and all the crew, thank you for being part of our midweek sports special. Good night. <laughs>